In this episode, we're going to talk about handheld weather stations, also referred to as portable weather stations. There are two types of uh, weather stations out there. There are non-ET predicting and ET predicting. Uh, this is a non-ET predicting style. The ET, uh, the prediction models, how they work is you make probably like three runs, three representative runs of what your car does, and you enter that information into the um, the weather station, and then as you go up to make a pass on your car, it'll spit out a number that you that it thinks your car is going to run. Uh, that's a more high end model, higher end features. That also, those also have uh, throttle stop. Uh, features on them for setting your throttle stop, which I don't have a throttle stop on my car, so I don't need all that uh, fancy options that those meters offer. So this Kestrel 5100, this is a really great meter. It uh, is very accurate. Kestrel makes a wide variety of meters for different things, so uh, their equipment is top notch. All the meters basically kind of function the same, and um, but they all have their subtle little kind of nuances so the most important thing you need to do is you need to read the instruction manual now if you haven't bought a meter yet and you're trying to decide which one you're going to do go with what you can do is you can go online and you can download a pdf of the manual and you can look through the manual of the particular meter you're interested in and check out its features see how the meter works that sort of thing and that'll help you decide this is a PDF for the, the Kestrel meter. And then um, if you go to one of the other meters, like a Computech, this is the Computech Racer manual. If we go to Altronics, which is the Perform Air model, this is the, uh, the manual for that, for that model. And you can just scroll through here. And like I said, you can, you can see you know, what the meter has to offer, how to use it, um, how to mess with the settings, that sort of thing. The ET predicting meters are nice because, like I said, they predict your ET for you based on the information that they gather. This meter, it gives you the information, you log it down in your notes, you look at your notes, and then you have to decide, you know, how to dial your car if you're a bracket racer, index racer, whatever. Um, you know, like for example, say on this meter there's a DA change of 150 feet from your last run going into the run you're getting ready to make. If the DA is uh, higher, say, you know, it was 1,000 feet last time, now it's 1150, well, then you can expect your car, everything else being equal, to slow down, um, you know, about a hundredth of a second. If the, you know, if the DA gets better, you know, if it goes from 1,000 feet to 900 feet, well, then you can expect your car to pick up about a thousandth of a second. Uh, same thing with humidity. You know, you get about a 15% change in humidity, your car is going to, you know, everything else being equal, rule of thumb, you should see about uh, a tenth, or I mean a hundredth of a second uh, change, whether the humidity goes up, you know, a car slows down, humidity goes down, the car picks up. So that's the only thing, um, like I said, with the non predicted meters, you have to kind of figure it out for yourself. Now, on this particular meter, right here I'm going to show you, this is the temperature sensor. If I turn this over, okay, this is the sensor port for the humidity, and this is the sensor port for the bare met metric pressure, and you can also see it's got a wind meter on here. Now, something I was told about this meter, if you notice, there's this little, it's like a little ridge here on the meter. The reason that's there is so your index finger can sit in the meter like that. The reason they wanted doing that is, is you don't want to hold the meter like this, because then it could cause your readings uh, to be off because you're, you know, could throw off the temperature, could throw off your barometer, could throw off your humidity, all that. So you want to hold the meter, this particular meter, you want to hold it down low. Now this meter will measure about 14 different items and you can shut those items off if you don't want to see all of those. If you're only interested in five or six things, then you can turn that off and, and the meter, you won't see that on the display. Um, it's middle of January, so it's like 40 degrees in my garage right now, but I'll just scroll through the thing. So this is what you do. You kind of scroll through your settings. Okay, you see it's 41 degrees in my garage right now. Humidity 72. One thing with, um, one common uh, issue with any weather station is you have to let it know what elevation you're at. 
So if you're at one track one day and another track another day, you have to look up the elevation for those tracks and make sure that you update the meter accordingly. Uh, right now, like I said, I'm in, you know, in my garage in Detroit, uh, and basically the the um, the altitude from sea level is 581 feet. So I had to enter that in there to make sure that the meter was reading correctly. But there's your density, altitude, air density. So you could see, I mean, this thing gives you a lot of information. And uh, it's a really great piece. I got this from a company called Beyondo Racing. The nice thing about Beyondo Racing is, number one, they're not a big box company like Summit or Jags. It's a family-run business. These guys are, um, they are championship winning racers. So if this is the kind of equipment that they're selling on their website, this is the kind of equipment that I want to buy. Um, they also have trailer mounted um, weather stations. I'm not really going to get into those. You can look those up. They perform the same functions. The thing of it is with these meters, any meter is you have to use it consistently. Meaning, you know, like I race at the same racetrack, so I pit in the same spot. So when I set my uh, canopy and everything up for my pit space, I will take this meter and I will hang it on the inside of my canopy up high. So that way it's out of the sunlight, but it's getting good airflow. The rule of thumb is to try to have the meter, you know, around where the air inlet, you know, the carburetor or, you know, your EFI ducting, you know, where your throttle body is on your motor. You know, you're going to want to be sampling the air from those particular, you know, that those areas. Like I said, I park pretty much in the same spot. One thing you don't want to do is you don't want to have the meter too close to the ground because it can pick up heat and humidity off the ground and it can throw your readings off. So that's really important. Um, like I said, all these meters, they all have different features. The higher end meters have more features. They're for maybe the more serious racers. I'm a bracket racer. I don't even really bracket race that much anymore. I'm basically a test and tune guy. I like to go out, make an adjustment, make a hit. Come back, make an adjustment, make a hit. Um, when I get back to my pit space, as soon as I get back to my pit space, I'm looking at my meter and I'm recording the readings. Okay? And then I go back and look at that. I've had this meter a little while and I'm getting, you know, really learning the ins and outs of it. It's a really nice piece. Like I said, it's $260. Which is, you know, I don't know if that's in your budget or not, but the phone apps are nice, especially because they're free. But the really nice thing about having a, a portable or a handheld meter is you can get an exact reading wherever you're at. So consistency is a key with these. If you use it consistently, your car is going to run consistently. You'll be able to document your info, look back on your notes, see what's going on with your car, figure out why did it slow down, why did it pick up. Um, you know, how should I dial for the next round? That sort of thing. That's where a meter like this is invaluable. So again, just like your sockets, like your timing light, like your screwdriver, this is a tool. Use it to your advantage. Get to know it. Use it. Study the information and see how your car reacts. And once you start doing that, you're really going to notice a difference in your program. You're going to be going rounds, things like that. You're going to be hitting your dial. Okay. Go out there. Have fun. Race safe. Go fast. Be consistent, log your info.